of condenser and coil testing, which will give you about 95% of what a Mercatronic will do. Okay. All right? Using so, a multimeter. Using a multimeter, an X-Tech multimeter, which is a... Okay. So what I'm going to do, I probably burned it out. Let me see if I got... Here we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to charge the condenser. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to do is dis discharge it by touching the case. It rounds it out. And then I'm going to put one lead. One lead on the case and one lead on the... There we go. It's charging up. You see the numbers climbing? Yep. And it'll go OL. Okay. So I have now charged the condenser. I had it on ohms. I had the, the uh, mode on ohms, mega ohms, resistance, so it's sending out a current. Okay, now, to test the condenser, I want to do this again. And nothing happens, and that's what we want. It means it's still charged. To show you how to discharge it, I will do it again. Okay, and here we go. Um, should climb up again. I've got it discharged. Now I've recharged it again, and we'll leave it there. And I'll test the leads again on it. And it's it's still it didn't stay charged that time. So maybe this condenser is not swapped, working. You swapped. Uh, oh, I did. I swapped leads. Yeah. That would that would do that too. That would make that happen. Okay. So let's try it again. Thank you. Yeah. So that condenser is working. It's holding its charge. In other words, it's not leaking. All right. Okay, so that's probably the most likely <clears throat> cause of a faulty ignition is a leaking condenser. So condenser will build up and hold a charge. That's okay. Correct. This has batteries in it. Okay. It runs DC, DC current through these leads into the condenser, the condenser stores that charge. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to do, I'll discharge the condenser. And the next thing I'm going to do is check for capacitance. So on this particular unit right here, it says M N F. that's nano, um, that's nanofarad or or uh, capacitance, and we will check that out right there. And this is uh, 236.9 microfarads or 0.236. Okay. Okay. This condenser right here is supposed to be rated at 0.25, so it's very, very close. It's within, it's within spec. Okay. Okay. We have a one that would go in a radio, which is non-electrolytic, which will replace this capacitor or condenser uh, very well. This one's a 0.2. Let's measure that one and see what it does. That's point uh, two oh nine microfarad or two hundred and nine nanofarads. So that one's point two right there, you see it? So that one's within ten percent, like there, it's got a rating of ten percent. And that one will work fine. All right. Okay, and to go back to here, these test exactly the same way. I'm back on um, on uh, ohms. ohms, and let's see if this one charges up. We'll discharge it first. Okay. There it goes. Hmm. So now we've done 
the same test that we have over there on the Mercatronic. Wow. Think of the Just money we both saved. Of them. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Now coil. We want to put it back on ohms. That's where it is. This is an auto ranging, so it does That's what it right. needs to do. You'll see this little M here change depending on what I am checking. So the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to check the secondary system. That's the one with the spark plug wire attached to it. So I want to go from the lead in here. You can see the little needle. And the other end of it is right here. And it takes a while for it to change. I have got 4.37k ohms. That's 4,350 ohms of resistance. Okay, that's in the secondary system. It's a very fine winding. It's got a long way to go. It's got a lot of resistance. Now let's check the primary circuit. Okay. The primary circuit, put it back on ground since they share a ground. You get all your weight back and your body and it probably goes down pretty good. Now you notice the K has disappeared up there in that corner and it's now two point you know, let's let it sit for a while. It takes a while for it to settle down. Four point seven, five point somewhere around five. Four to five. Yeah, it's dropping still. 1.5 ohms of resistance, not thousands, just ohms. And it's 1.2, so this thing has a very low resistance, which is in keeping because the primary system has a very coarse winding, and it's got very low resistance. The secondary system has a very fine winding, and it has a very high resistance. So if you're getting a high and a low resistance there on those two circuits, and the coil is uncracked, the chances are pretty damn good that it's good. You can't load test it like a Mercatronic, but uh, you come pretty close doing this. This will tell you whether a coil is any good or not. Hmm. That's right handy. Okay. Now some of the meters don't have capacitance, so like this meter right here does not have capacitance. But you can do, you still could do a leakage ch check with it. Put it on ohms. And I'll short it out again. Some meters have capacitance, some don't. It's got a magnet on it. Let's see if it's, this one doesn't seem to want to do anything either. I did the other day. Let's just make sure they've got it on here. Some meters like yours don't seem to want to work on this. I don't know what. There we go. It's charging up. Did you see that? Yep. Okay. Just didn't have a good enough connection. Okay, so this is charged. Oh, right there. Check it again. <laughs> Still good. No charge up. Short it out. I'll try it one more time. Make sure it charges up again. There it goes again. So we've done the leakage test. We just can't check the capacitance of it. Right. But the leakage is the most common problem with these things. They're either shorted or open or they leak like a sieve. And then we can still perform on ohms. Oh, this is not an auto ranging system. I'd have to put it on thousands of ohms to test the secondary, and then move it back up to two to uh, two hundred, which is just regular ohms, to check the uh, primary circuit. Very good.